All right. Morning. You're welcome. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for joining this Sunday. Thank you, Zulu people, Mwate, Mamdungu, and everyone. Please join us now. We are, we are beginning our Sunday house of talk. You're welcome as usual. And, and as the custom is, share your Facebook with someone. Share the Facebook. Share your page. Share this page. We will someone let them come and be with us. Thank you very much for joining and thank you all the time for joining, for coming with us through these uh, wonderful words, these good things we are discussing, this good, this good knowledge. Through this understanding of how we are going to actualize man, how we are going to actualize man, please share the link so that others can also be in our class this is a very good class and i'm telling you it helps you you know we have got so many things i tell you there, there's no doubt moment on social media already we have sickening news happening on social media and that's why everyone is running but now we have a classroom offering you a message of actualizing man in his uh in his intended state state is obviously good for you to invite another invite others please invite someone so we begin thank you Mwape, for making zoom possible always we appreciate that i think we should begin we started a little bit late I, uh, do i have recording rights all right let's go recording in progress awesome so we are on please keep sharing let's all be here this is a place to be this Sunday, every Sunday, 9.30 to 11, just an hour, or just under an hour. So, we are continuing all the time where we discuss these issues. Because, please folks, share. I, I want many people to join us because I don't want them to to catch us in the middle, then it will be difficult for them to, to get this. So we are still discussing man, actualization of man, because man has to understand who, who they are. Clearly, we don't understand who we are. I've shown you through all the happenings. These are facts. Man is dead in the mind. The news, the behavior, the inventions, they are all just destroying man. But we, we know that through truth, we understand that two Adams were supposed to be brought together to produce one being. I talk about two Adams because it's, it's a scripture in First Corinthians 15, 45. The first Adam was of the earth. The second Adam is of the spirit. So, in man, two atoms are supposed to be brought together to produce one being. So in order to be a spiritual, in order to be, to, be, to be spiritual, you should have been physical first. That's what I'm saying. We begin from a physical state. And this is what we are, we are, we are in now, physical state. When I say physical state, it's a state where we are in a deplorable state. Like I always say, every one of us has a physical mind, a dead mind, a mind that is swift to shed blood, a mind that is swift to pull down another, a mind that is swift to discredit another. So in order for us to be spiritual, we, we, we needed to become physical. So this physical state was, in, was put on us by God. But after that, we need to go and get the spiritual state. So hence, two Adams was supposed to be brought together to produce one, one being, the spiritual Adam and the physical Adam. So God gave Adam knowledge to learn everything. When we are in our physical state, God gave us the knowledge to learn everything. And that's why you notice the sky is the limit. When you put your mind to reading or to learning, you can learn anything. He named everything. And, and the sad part is that he, he, he got the credit. Adam named everything but got the credit. 
he never appreciated God. He did that so that we can worship him. And that's, and that's what is happening. We worship Adam. We worship the physical mind. Worship, remember I said, is word shape. We carry the mind of Adam in our behavior, in the way we relate to another person. We are worshiping. We are worshiping the Adamic mind. Our behavior in our dealings with one another. We bore the image of Adam. So to bore the image is to carry the image. Remember the image also, when we say image, we're not talking about physical stature. The letters are the images of the word. So we bear the, our mind as the letters or the writings or the knowledge of Adam. We bore his image. So we worship him. We carry his words in our minds. So we, we worship his words. We carry just like the ship, the cargo ship carries cargo. So the word, the word ship also carries words. Our minds worship the, either the Adamic mind or the Christ mind. In this case, we are worshiping his mind. That's why our behavior is like that. That's why when you go to your, your everyday life, everyday living, uh, into your social media, it's people are worshiping, if, uh, worshiping deplorable ideas, de de deplorable behaviors. So he did that. They put a mind in us that hates us. That's why we are so swift to kill one another. The mind in us hates our, hates our brothers, our sisters, and it, it, and it hates self. It's a mind which has no self-confidence. Because we have lost the, the mind of Christ, the spiritual mind which we had before. But God gave us a physical mind first, and this physical mind has, has no word, no truth. That's why when the leaves fed, they lose water. So they put, so, so when the leaves fed, they lose water. So our mind has fed, has faded, and we've lost water, we've lost knowledge. So these are things we want to, to be discussing with you. That's why I urge you all the time, please, as you do this, Let's share these links so that others can also benefit. And you need to begin, if you're going to understand these things, you're going to learn to accept the truth from those who know better than you. Because that's how it, that's how it is. There is someone who, best, who knows better than you who you're going to accept the truth from. And these people are what we're calling the son of man, S-U-N of man. The sun is the light that shines in light. You won't see the light in darkness. So when we say God made man in his image, like I was trying to explain, images are found on paper. Images are books. And, and even when we begin to understand that uh, the dead in Christ. When, when, when the Bible talks us about the dead in Christ, the dead in Christ are Jesus, Moses, Isaiah, etc. Those who have, who 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 had their mind, who had the mind of Christ. You shall see now that the messages that I'm trying to tell you are going viral. Mostly, you would find us in a room where you needed to walk to, but now. The scripture has promised, after I'm gone, the scripture talks about shouting from the rooftops. The, the messengers of God will be shouting from the rooftops. So shouting from the rooftops, that's where the antennas, the antennas and dishes, internet comes in. So we are meeting the Lord in the air. Vapors travel in air. Words are traveling in, on internet now. We are meeting the Lord in the air. 
it's easy for everyone now to listen to me. Just the other day, I was looking at our views. There were 101. Others are were from around the world, as it should be. Because remember, like I said, this message of actualizing man is sent to the four type of human beings, black, yellow, brown, and white. So we are meeting the Lord in the air, through the, the airwaves, through the social media, the internet. Because vapor travels, travels in air. Vapor is, is water. Water is wet. In his glory, in the body. Remember, the light bulb is the glory of the bulb. So I'm the glory of the son of man. Of man. So I'm glorifying the truth to you. Because we are in the world where we need to understand these things. Even when the scriptures say Eden, the earth is Eden. Adam was put in the garden of Eden. It's Eden is eternal darkness and eternal light. Two types, two, two sides. Physical mind and the spiritual mind. Sound travels on the wave of water. These are things we have been discussing. I'm trying to to remind you so that we begin to understand you and I. So those who are knowledgeable to you are higher powers. That's why the Bible says respect them because knowledge is power. Folks, why we are discussing the Bible every Sunday at 9.30 here, why we are dis discussing scripture and truth is because the Bible or rather scripture was designed to be the mind. Scripture was designed to be the mind. At the end of it all, my objective is to make sure your mind is scripture because your mind now is Ad Adamic ideas. Your mind is worldly idea, Western ideas, Chinese ideas, Eastern ideas, African ideas. That's your mind. But the scripture was designed to be the mind. Scripture is, to, is supposed to be to replace our division as mankind. Because scripture is God. And remember, God is the author of love. So if Ukrainians are going to love Russians and vice versa, vice versa both should replace their minds with scripture. Because like I'm saying, scripture is God. And God is the author of love. God is not an emotional force. God, now when I say uh, Adam and Eve, I mean Adam and Christ, the two minds, I'm trying to show you that uh, actually God made both Adams. He made both of them. When I say God made Adams, I'm talking about the first Adam and the last Adam. First Corinthians 15 verse 45. God made both Adams and is the judge of both. The Bible is prophecy, folks, not history, like I always say. The Bible is prophecy, not history. So, I'm sorry, the people in our Zoom, Zoom section seem to be having a problem. Let me see if I can bring them back. Don't know what's up, but please stay stay here. Don't go away. Let's enjoy. Let me change this to that. Let's enjoy together. I want to bring the the folks on uh, on Zoom so that they also enjoy what we're what, what we're trying to explain here. Stay with me because this is. A timely message, a good message. So as we wait for for them, we'll talk. We'll keep to talking until they come. I know they're coming in soon. I'm just bringing them back. Sorry for that. So God is the author of love, and we're saying that the Bible was designed to be the mind, and the and the Bible is is scripture, and scripture is God. God is not emotions. I was saying. So okay, I think our 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 Zoom folks are coming back. 
I want us to be on the same page. We are in the same classroom. Let's wait for one another. So there we go. I think I'm having them back now. Okay. All right. There they come, They're coming back. All right, we have them back, awesome. Sorry for that, Zoom folks, you're welcome. Let's continue, don't know what happened. Maybe it's a network on the Zoom site, but on Facebook, we're good. Okay, let's continue. C can I still have the recording rights, Mape? Recording in progress. Awesome. Okay, so the Bible is prophecy, folks, not history. You, you need to understand it in its own context, not in human culture or religious perspective or beliefs. You need to understand it like that. And I think I've been trying to show you these things. Even the Christ's life just explaining and fulfilling prophecy. So there's nothing in the, in the story of Christ that is new. The Christ's life is just explaining and fulfilling prophecy because the Bible is not a history book. It only looks new if you take Christ as a historical story. When you take Christ as a historical story, then whatever you read will look new to you. But the Christ story is the prophetic I am. I, I guess you're getting what I'm, I hope you understand what I'm saying. It's a prophetic I am. It's not a history story. When it's a history story, you think it's, it's a new story. Malachi 15, 34, Bible reads, and at the ninth hour, oh sorry, Ma, Mark, Mark, book of Mark, gospel of Mark 15, 34, and at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachitani, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So, I want to show you that uh, the Christ story, Christ life is explaining, is fulfilling prophecy. It's not a history, it's not a history story. It's not a historical story. For example, the story, of the, the scenario of Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachitani, which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In Mark 15, verse 4, is fulfilling Psalms 22, verse 1, to the chief musician upon Igelus, Shaha, a psalm of David. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from, being, for, from helping me and from the ways of my rolling? 22 verse 2 Psalms, Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou, thou hearest not, and in the night season, and I am not silent. 22 verse 3, But thou art holy, O thou inhabitest the praises of Israel. Verse 4, Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. Follow the story. But I'm a worm and not, I, I'm no man, a reproach of men and despise of the people. Oh, that, oh, they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shout out the lip. They shake their head saying, he trusted on the Lord that, that he, should believe, he should deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. So this is, was just fulfilling the prophecy of Psalms, if you notice about the cross. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gasped upon me with their mouths as a raveling and a rolling lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. 
It goes on and on. If you read the whole chapter of Psalms 22, you 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 get to understand that this is talking about truth. Truth has been scorned upon. Christ, Christ, the word Christ means anointed one, one who carries the truth. And we know that truth has been scorned upon, has been rejected. We created our own truth, and that's why we have an illusion of mind, a mind that is fit to do evil. But man is failing to accept this truth of Psalms 22 and the Christ principle, like I always say, because man was given that time of doing things his way. 6,000 years man has been given to shape and make the world in his kind. After that, God is not going to tolerate the human image to dominate the earth. Human image, that means the images in, in all the books in the library are all human ideas. They have dominated the world. God has allowed it for 6,000 years. But after that, he's not going to tolerate it. I showed you, I've been showing you, Exodus 1, 15, the Bible reads, six days may work be done. And remember in the, in the book of Peter, the Bible says a day in God's eyes is like a thousand. So six days or 6,000 years may work be done. 6,000 years, man has been given to fool around to do what he wants to do, to dominate the earth, to tolerate, to dominate the earth with his images, his writings. Six days, Exodus 1, 15, six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord. Whosoever does any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Put to death there means if you do your own things now that 6,000 years has gone, God will put you to, will make you lose your mind. You'll be dead in your mind. And I've showed you that we have, when Christ came, the 6,000 years were over, and God gave us a grace period en route to the 7,000 year period. So in the grace period, is still not tolerating evil. That's why you, you notice every human mind is dead in the mind. They have been, they have lost their mind. Putin is killing everyone. On our, on our front, go to your social media. People are insulting one another. People are undressing. People are doing everything. Because we have, we have been put to death. We want to do our own way. But God says you can't. Now we're entering the 7,000 year period. You can't fool around. You can't do your own things. In the 7,000 year period, man is going to, to be filled with the spiritual mind. Now we have the Adamic mind. The spiritual mind, I, I told you, what is the spiritual mind? The words that I speak, they are spirit. With truth, with the word of God. The scriptures are supposed to replace your mind. Hebrews 4.1, talking about the, the, the rest, the 7,000 year period. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Verse 2, for unto us was the gospel preached. Because the gospel, even now, the word is being preached to you to replace your Adamic mind. Unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. To everyone is being preached, the, the four human type. But the word preached did not profit them. The, the Adamic mind doesn't want the word. It created its own images, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Verse 3, for we which have believed do enter into rest. When you believe, believing is not deciding they have believed. No, because when you replace your mind with scripture, you, you replace your Adamic mind with the Christ mind. You replace your physical mind with the, the spiritual mind. You enter in the rest. You enter in the 7,000 year period. Meaning you can't do your own work. You can't, that's why I say when you begin to understand what I'm trying to, to tell you, you begin to understand that the world is not about how you feel or how you want it to be. It's how truth wants the world to be. The truth which we have all neglected, which we need to, 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 to embrace, which we need to replace in our mind with 
replace the Adamic mind with, with, uh, with, uh, with truth. Verse 4, for we which have believed do enter into rest, and he said, as I have sown in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, verse 4, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day. See, it's he's showing that he used a uh, prophetic language in a certain place and, and called it the, the seventh day as in a literal day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. So Paul is trying to explain Genesis 2, verse 2, where God rested. But he said that was an allegory showing you. See? And, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Verse 5, and in this place again, again, in this place, in the book of Psalms, David also echoes, says, if they shall enter into their rest. Verse 6, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first priest entered not in because of unbelief. We are in pain and in trouble as a human race because we are not believing these words I'm, I'm trying to share with you. The humankind, the four human beings, white, black, yellow, and brown, should come together and, and begin to read truth, not different cultural truths, uh, cultural beliefs. I showed you in the book of uh, uh, Ezekiel 1, verse 4, that the four creatures, these four creatures, folks, they are the faces of men because they were men. These are the four types of men. White, the Caucasians. Caucasians, they are called Caucasians because they came from the Caucasus mountain. They are called Caucasians again because they are Caucasian means made by Asians. They came from Asia, where we all came from. The original man came from Asia. Asia means earth or black. Then uh, we have the brown, the Indians, the Jews, those in the east, the Japanese. Sorry, the Indians, the, the Jews, right? And then we have the yellow, the, in, the, the Chinese. Then we have the blacks, the Africans. Ezekiel says he saw these four folks with wings. And when their wings touched, they moved in one direction. The only way the human being is going to enter its rest is when we, 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 we let our wings touch. We all feed from one the truth is one. It's absolute. I'm not preaching Christianity here or Islam or Judaism or science. I'm teaching truth. This is truth. This is what is going to actualize man, like I always say. And I'm going to continue saying these things until someone hears, until people begin to understand. And that's why I say it's imperative for you to be here every Sunday because then you miss out. Sometimes I might say something in, in part, which I'd said already in full. So anyway, I hope that brings someone to speed for those who are behind. So again, Hebrews 4, 7, but we're still here in Hebrews says, again, he, he, he limited a certain day, saying in David, today, you see, it's the same thing. It's not because it's not history. It's allegorical. To David, he says, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Even today, folks, when you hear his words, don't harden your heart. That's why I say when you come to listen to me, please don't come with your full cup because you're not going to draw anything. Because I want, um, I've been sent, we've been sent, all of us, with, with, this, with the scriptures in our mind. The true scriptures have been sent to bring man back to truth, to bring man to usher man into the 7,000 year period. And everything I say is scriptural. When I say I've been sent to, to bring you into the, to the, into the 7,000 year period, I'm talking about Psalms, I'm talking about the Gospels. The Bible says the, the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. The S-U-N of man is the one who's going to bring in the Sabbath. So, verse uh, 8, is it verse 7? Yeah, to David say that. Verse 8, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have, have spoken of another day? So he's showing you that the rest didn't end at Jesus. People are still not rested. Rested there means, they haven't, to rest means you stop doing your own things. You start doing the things of truth. Verse 9, there remains therefore a rest of the people of God. 
Verse 10, for he that is entered into his rest. You see how you know that you have you entered into your rest. Hebrews 4.10. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has seized from his own works. You stop doing your own things. Now, no wonder I was saying, the, the, this world that I'm asking you in has got nothing to do with how you feel. It's not what you want. It's, that's why when you reach this stage, you begin to speak like Christ. Not my will, but your will be done. But of course, when you go to religion, people want their will. Hmm? That's all they are looking for, their will. But the 7,000 year period will be the will of God, not the will of man. So, for he that is entered into his rest, he also has seized from his own works, as God did from his. Verse 11, let us labor. And that's what we're doing here. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into the rest. Okay. Those of us who have joined first row, uh, we will be locked out uh, in the next uh, few minutes. The first session will be coming to an end. Uh, once we're locked out, we may log in business and interventions for the second session. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mapek, for that. So for the stand for he that is entered into his rest, okay? 11, let us labor, therefore, to enter into his rest, into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So please, folks, let us get these words as we begin, because there's, I've got so much things to tell you. So now if I, that's why I'm working with you at a lower pace, that we begin to understand one another. Then you understand what I'm talking about. Because there is a, a lot of things to be done about the human mind. There's a lot of things to, to be done, but we need man to begin to understand the truth, to, to forget, to forget uh, the, the human ideas. Because man must begin to worship God. I know when you say worship, when you go to religion, worship is uh, making noise, playing music, chanting words into the sky. But I showed you word, worship has got two words. Word, ship, word and ship. A ship carries something. So this ship is your mind. Your mind carries the word. So, but you cannot word ship. You cannot carry the word. You cannot word ship the word unless the word is in you. The words get in you when you stand at the gate. I hope you understand what, what I'm trying to, to say. God dwells in houses that are made without hands. He dwells in the minds. The Bible talks about the, he does not dwell in houses made with hands. He dwells in the minds that have accepted, but these minds must have accepted truth. The Lord is the truth. That's why you, you, you cannot call a liar, an adulterer, a thief, a fornicator, etc., the temple of God. Just like it's very difficult to call my mind and your mind this far as a temple of God. I haven't come to here to judge anyone. The words that I speak are judging me and are judging you. It's very difficult to call myself, my mind, and your mind the temple of God. And that's why we're striving for it eventually to become the word of God. But all of us, because the, our first destination was a physical mind, and the physical mind has been filled with the images of Adam, physical images. But we need to fill our mind now with the images of Christ, with the spiritual images. So it's very difficult. It's very, very difficult to say our, our minds have God. You cannot call a liar because you can't call a liar, which we all are, an adulterer, which we all are, <laughs> human beings. A thief, which we all are, a fornicator, which we all are, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, as a temple of God. Unless the truth captures your mind and consequently your actions are, are truthful, they can never be the temple of the truth. And that's why we are all here, folks. When you see us here together, it's because, it's because we are all sinners. If I wasn't a sinner, I wouldn't be here. The Son of Man 
brings these things, these issues because he understands them, he has been there. Paul can, could tell you about death, about the murder, because Paul killed some, he was a killer. He understood those things. So for those who think they are righteous, this is not the, their platform. It's a platform of us who are beginning to heal. Okay. So to every action, there's a reaction. Because truth is real. So please, folks, let's begin now to stop thinking about what you want, how you want, but stop th start thinking about how God wants, I mean, how truth wants to shape you. Truth wants you to communicate truth. But in order to create, to communicate truth, and uh, you need to have a complex communication. But in order to create complex communication, you have to have the ability to reason. You see? Because, and did you know, man has that ability. That's why I'm speaking here as a son of man. We are supposed to have a distinction between man and animal. But you have seen in a in Adamic world, we live like animals. Sorry, our Zoom folks have been kicked out again. Let's bring them back in, folks. Let's enjoy this. I know this is good, but I want everyone to hear this. Just keep, just relax, buckle up. Come with an open cup. Don't come with a full cup. Otherwise, you won't get what I'm saying. It'll be difficult for you to understand what I'm saying. So we are different from animals. That's why there's hope for man. That's why I will never stop talking because I know there's hope for man. The difference between man and animal. We know animal. I've taught this before. Animal. All these are acronyms. Animal. Okay. Our Zoom folks are coming. So animal is an acronym. All these are acronyms. Okay, I'm trying to bring the the, folk, the Zoom folks back on. Okay, so they'll, they'll find us. Animo. A N I, and M A L. These are all acronyms. There are acronyms. Recording in progress. Animo has two words. A N A. -N a N I and A M A L. A N I means animated. M A L Mao. So animated Mao content. Animals have temporal contentment. That's an animal. You notice we have got people who have got temporal contentment. Because they want to satisfy their contentment, they'll go into a bar, they'll go into adultery, they'll go and drink and enjoy. I mean, drink and they hate other people. They'll go and do other sports. Animal, animated, mal content. Animals have temporal contentment. Animated means able to set in motion. These animals don't sow, don't reap. You realize when the world is engulfed when when a man is engulfed in leisure there's no progress they'll give you ten thousand you go around in dollar town by the way i'm in dollar this sunday i'm i'm streaming from in dollar you go in dollar town and blow it up because it's because of the animal character which we need to destroy animated male content temporal contentment you want to feel the contentment with leisure. Not that leisure is wrong, but remember Paul says all things are lawful and all things are permissible. All things are lawful, but not everything is profitable. So an animated animals don't sow. They don't reap. He's never content unless we give him contentment. A dog is never content until, uh, unless the master gives him contentment. They give him a bond. 
a fish is never content unless you give it a ball and put the, the fish food. So he is never content unless he is given contentment. And that's what we are in as Adamic mind. We lost our mind. We have lost our minds. That's why you notice the zoo is a place of, of contentment for animals. Anyway, Jeremiah 7 9. 7 9. Will you still murder and commit adultery and swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal and walk after other gods whom you know not? The word is God, folks. So to walk unto other God is to walk unto other words. When the Bible says, now we're beginning to understand uh, how to verify the scripture. Because I told you, scripture is prophetic. So when the Bible says, we use murder and commit adultery and swear falsely and benefits and, and walk after other gods. So to walk after other gods, whom you know not, the word is God. So when we say when we say you're walking after other gods, is to is that you are walking unto other words, other ideas, other things which give you contentment. So, but remember, word is God. So you are walking after other gods. You are walking after other words, other ideas. Jeremiah seven ten. I like to read these scriptures so that uh, you folks can uh, begin to understand the scripture and that you begin to know that I'm not using my mind. I'm verifying the scripture. I don't know if, if there's something to, to be said by someone of what I'm talking about. Folks at Zoom, Uh, for me, uh, at the moment, it's none. Yes, none. Okay. Just a few minutes. We can we can stop this streaming, but let me just maybe remind you of something else also. Mam Lumbuka, do you have anything to say? Before you are cut off from Zoom. Is Mama here? Um, not at this moment, sir. I'm, I'm listening and trying to connect the um, the talk. All right. I think I had some connectivity challenges, but um, yeah, we'll wait for you to to go all the way to the end, then maybe say something. Mm -hmm. So, okay. We need to do that. Everything we do is not to satisfy our selfish appetite. Even when we eat, we need to eat to live. I've, I've, I've talked about that. We need to begin to understand that uh, words, which, I mean, food, which, which um, excite your palate sometimes might not be good. So, the truth is God. The word is God. And the word wants to go in our minds, like I always say. But our mind is full of Adamic mind. And for us to have wisdom, we need to have truth in our mind. Because remember, wisdom is power. And wisdom comes from truth. The truth that be. The Bible talks about uh, Romans 13, 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Remember, now you understand how to read the Bible. It's not a history book. It's, it's prophetic. Let me read that again slowly for you to, to grasp what I've just said. Romans 13, 1, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are the end of God. So what is power? I said wisdom is power. 
and wisdom comes from truth. So when, when we say the powers that be, we are saying the truth that be, the knowledge that be. The Bible is wonderfully kept that you need to have the skill and be able to selfless come through it. You need to be a, an SUN of man, the son of man. Second Corinthians 5 5. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God, who also hath given us as given unto us the earnest of the spirit. The six, therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while as we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. The seven, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say unwillingly, rather to be absent from the, from the body and be to be present with the Lord. Nine, wherefore we labor that what, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Present with the Lord. All the prophets, though dead, in the natural body are present with the Son of Man. The Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. They are in the Son of Man's mind. If I'm the Son of Man, then all the prophets are in my mind. If they are not in my mind, then I'm not the Son of Man. And the prophets are in our minds not as phantoms or ghosts, but the word, the scriptures are in the scriptures from the other prophets, all of them are in my mind. So truth is like math, folks, like I always say. It makes math, it takes math to prove math. So for me to prove truth, I'm using truth to prove truth. When I say the SUN of man. All of them, when, when they say, even Paul, when he was saying, if, if I die, I'll be, today I'll be present with the Lord. He was talking about his mind. He wasn't talking about his physical body. Even me today, if I die, I'll say, if I, as a well, so far, die today, I'll be present with the Lord. The S-U-N of man is the Lord of the Sabbath. God is still going to raise up someone who will be speaking what I'm speaking. I'll be present in him. Truth is like math, folks. Math it takes math to prove math. It takes truth to prove truth, not lies to prove lies, not history to prove his, to prove truth. I hope this is making sense. I'm trying to be very slow, but sometimes it's, these words are heavy. John five twenty six. For as the Father has life in Himself, so has He given to the Son of to the S U N to have life in Himself. Was the truth which is in him. All right. Ezekiel 2, verse 1. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet. Remember, the SUN of man is the Lord of the Sabbath. Ezekiel was the SUN of man of his time. I am the SUN of man of my time. And he, will, he says, and he, and he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. Verse 2. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. You see, the spirit, the, the words that I speak are spirit. Isaiah had the words of all the prophets in his mind. And the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet and I heard him that spake unto me. Like the spirit has entered into me, the words, the scriptures of Jesus, of, of Moses. Verse 3, and he said unto me, son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel. I told you, God does not send everyone. He only sends the Son of Man. It's not everyone who comes. No wonder there is the chickenery in preaching truth. Everyone is preaching with a suit, lying to people, telling people because they are using lies to, to verify truth. So verse, he, he says, uh, verse two, and uh, sorry, verse three, and he said unto me, Son of Man, I send thee to, to the children of Israel to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. So we understand you folks. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. Verse 4, for they are impudent children and stiff naked. That's how humans are because they're, they're right. the image they, are, they bore now is the image of Adam. I do send thee unto them and thou shalt say unto them, thus saith the Lord. 
thus says the, thus says the Lord God. There's five, and, and they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear for their rebellious house. So even when I'm speaking here, I haven't come to convince anyone about truth. I've just come to do my business, to speak truth. And to him who has a need to hear, will hear. Yet shall know that yet shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The six, and thou son of man, be not afraid of them. So when I'm when I speak with authority, recording in progress. Because the scripture told me not to be afraid. I am not afraid because even if even if even if I die, I will still be with the Lord, in in the Lord's mind, in someone in the Son of Man's mind. The six again, and thou son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words. See, when the, the, when the Bible is talking about scorpions and briars, these are human characters. No, be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. So God has sent us to such a ground, imagine. And we need to preach after all. The seven, and thou, hast, and thou shalt speak my words unto them, like what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm trying to verify what I'm telling you with scripture, that I must, I'm not trying to speak my mind. It says, that, and thou, thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. Verse 8, but thou son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like the rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. You see, it's not history. Eating there means imbib imbibing the, the words in your mind. And when I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a row of a book was therein. The, that's the scripture. The scriptures are not sent to all of you. The scriptures are sent to the earth end of man. And I've not come here to, to base anybody's Bible, but there is not going to be progress with man and unless man recognizes the SUN of, of, of man who has been given the role of a book. The role of a book is sent to the Son of Man and then the Son of Man is sent to preach to the nations. Lo, a role of a book was there in verse 10. And he spread it before me and it was written there within and without. And there was written there in lamentations and mourning and woe. The scriptures are given to the Son of Man, Israel of Man. In verse, in verse, uh, in uh, Ezekiel two one, the one uh, we read was two one. Okay, all right. I hope this is making sense, folks. I'm trying to be all slow about this. But stay in this class. You will learn a lot of truth. Like I always say, stop being illusional. If you want to talk to God, read the scriptures. Read the truth. Just like today, we are speaking to God with you. We are speaking to truth. Scripture is the burning bush of the Bible. And the Bible says the burning bush, that's, that's the scripture. The word is the ghost. It's not tangible. When you talk about the Holy Ghost, because it's not tangible. The truth is the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit. Remember, because John 6, 63 says again, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. So when we say Holy Spirit, it's the Holy Word. The word is the Holy Ghost. It's not tangible. The truth is the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit. Lies are the evil ghost. Evil spirits. That's why you say when somebody is a killer, he's got an evil spirit in him because he's got evil words, evil images in him. I hope this is making sense. If it's not making so much sense, folks, you are free to call us on the number on top. The recording, and these recordings are also recorded every every Sunday. We have this talk. 
we record these and they are saved on Facebook. You can go way back from 2015, I think, or 2008, and on YouTube. And please, as usual, like I always say, when you go to YouTube, don't forget to click, click, subscribe, and like. So, folks, I think this is enough for today. And if you have questions, please, you can still call me. Plus two zero, plus two six zero, nine seven seven four one five five one five. You're welcome. Thank you again for being good listen. Please go through these words every time we preach them. Take your time, read your Bible. If you have questions, please call me. If you, if you want to join, if you want to be a part of this group, you are free also. If you want to help this group, you are free to help it, support it. Like I always say, you, you cannot help this group. When you help this group, you are simply helping yourself. Thank you very much for joining us. Let us meet again Sunday, same time, 9.30 to 11. Thank you. If there's no questions, nothing, I will see you next time. Bye.